really spooky, but not so much that like I couldn't sleep at night. Although I didn't read at night because I was <laughs> You didn't want to risk it. I didn't want to risk it. Hi, welcome to our channel. My name is Elena. My name's Erin. And today we're going to do a little recap for the month of October. We are going to do short reviews of all the books we read and talk about a few beauty favorites that we loved this month. And we might end with a little TBR for what's on our list to read in November. I'm going to have to come up with one. <laughs> Should we start with books or beauty? I think let's start with books. Works for me. Okay. Okay, so I started this month with a witchy read, The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. I really, really enjoyed this book. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on it, you can check out our witchy tier ranking video. But spoiler alert, this book is every bit as good as people say it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a cozy romance. It's the Halloween town meets... Why can I Emily never remember? Henry. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this book is Halloween town meets Emily Henry in the best way. Okay, so the first book I read this month was Shark Heart by Emily Haybeck. Oh yeah, I forgot you read this. Yes, this was on audiobook. Um, so this this story is essentially about a newlywed couple and the husband finds out he has a degenerative condition where he turns into a great white shark. Like a literal, not a, like a business shark. No, like a literal great white shark. So Yikes. <laughs> it just felt like it was trying way too hard. I mean, this is obviously a very fantastical premise already and it just felt like they were really, really trying to make something incredibly different and out there and wild. And in the end, I felt like they actually didn't say anything new or anything very original. Um, I was not into it at all. A lot of people love it, just I did not think it was that good. Okay, my next book from this month was The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic. This is like a Gilmore Girls inspired story. Witch in a small town, she runs a bakery, lots of food descriptions, loved the food descriptions, did not love this book. I don't think That's it ranked sad. very high in our tier ranking video. Yeah. Um, I know everyone it's loves so this, right. so I don't know. Maybe I'm the weird one because it seems like everyone else really liked this yeah. book. I just thought the plot was like just kind of stupid. Honestly, <laughs> it was just kind of it was just bad. Uh, yeah, not for me. And the last book that is also mentioned in our witchy tier ranking video is the book Venco, which I read this month and absolutely loved. Now this is a witchy book. If you want a witchy book, read Venko, okay? <laughs> Cut to the chase. This one is witchy and it is good. Okay, the next one that I read was The Hacienda by Isabel Canas. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This was on Lena's recommendation. I'm usually not good with scary things. Um, she I'm, always figures out the end before she gets there. It makes it less scary that way. The Hacienda is really spooky, okay? Something is wrong with it. So talking about you walking around the house being like, what is wrong with this Hacienda? <laughs> <laughs> Something is seriously wrong with the place. Like, I feel bad for yeah. her. Um, I really liked this, especially for a debut novel. I thought it was really good. Loved, like, the backdrop of the Mexican War, for, War of Independence. I did have issues with the ending. I thought it was sort of, like, kind of rushed and there were things left unexplained or sort of wrapped up too quickly. But overall, I think that this was excellent. Really spooky, but not so much that like I couldn't sleep at night. Although I didn't read at night because I was <laughs> You didn't want to risk it. I didn't want to risk it. Okay, I also listened to a classic this month, The Secret Garden, and uh, I loved it. Oh my gosh, it was just transportive. Having the old timey language read out loud in audiobook form was so relaxing. This is the perfect thing to listen to if you have anxiety, you struggle to wind down at the end of the day, put on The Secret Garden, okay? Okay, so it's about a little girl who is kind of a jerk. She's just, she's rough around the edges, all right? But then her whole family dies of cholera, which turns out to be a good thing for her. She gets shipped off to her uncle in England and she has to grow up a little bit more in the mansion overlooking the moor. So it's a gorgeous English countryside setting and she discovers a secret garden 
and by tending the secret garden back to life, she transforms her life and becomes a wonderful person and also transforms the life of everybody else in the mansion. That makes sense. So <laughs> it worked out for everyone. Okay, the next one I read was One Dark Window by Rachel Gillick. Um, this was really, really cool. I wasn't expecting to read this, but the cover really hooked me. It's essentially about a girl who has a monster inside of her head and she teams up with like a band of unlikely highwaymen to rid her little village of this like oppressive magical mist by uniting a deck of magical cards. So it's really cool. That was such that a good summary. Such a good plot, I'm so right? impressed. Like, and that's a hard one. It's, it's, it's good. very we, unique. We both read this. Yes, I read this too. <laughs> um, the main character can be a bit annoying, and I think that's like generally the consensus on Goodreads too. But there's a lot of good things about this book. Very eerie. It's it's got a great setting. The nightmare, who is like the monster inside her head, is such a cool character and you part. just want to learn so much more about him. I thought it was a really good fantasy book. Yeah and there were twists that really surprised me. I didn't always see where this book was going yeah. until we got there. Yeah. Um, I will say the main character... Mm. By the end I was like, can someone else be the main character? <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about the next book on my list which is the second in this series. Two Twisted Crowns. Okay, um, no spoilers though. No spoilers. I haven't read it yet. It follows the same characters, but it focuses in on different ones than the ones in the first. And it like, it's like the perfect sequel. I, I'm, I'm just like really, it just like was so satisfying. It really tied everything up, explained everything, fleshed out the characters so well. I thought that this was like a phenomenal follow-up. And not to say Goodreads again, but it's got a 4.66 rating Does on it? Goodreads right Ooh. now. Yeah. I mean, it just came out a couple weeks ago, but so far it's just been rave reviews. And it is. I think it's worth the hype. You'll have to read it. Yeah, I definitely felt like the first one had a lot of potential. And it sounds like the second book is really gonna get me there. I'm planning to start it tonight. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited to read it. Alright, I have one more book. I also listened to All That Is Wicked, A Gilded Age Story of Murder and the Race to Decode the Criminal Mind dun, by dun, Kate dun. Winkler Dawson. Um, I really, really liked it. So this is a nonfiction true crime book. And I do, I do like to dabble in the true crime world quite a bit. Um, and when I started this book, I wasn't familiar with the story. Okay, so this is the story of Edward Rudolph. And in the beginning, I kind of got duped because at first, the first few chapters are about how he murdered his wife and child, which, you know, obviously super, super sad, but I was a bit like, Okay, just another, I can't swear, but just another jerk who hates women and murdered his wife to get out of his marriage. Like, eh, seen it. But there's actually way more to this story than I expected. It's actually a crazy, crazy story. The story is kind of told through the lens of different journalists who have interviewed him over the, over the years. This all went down in like the 1800s. Oh. This is a Victorian, oh. he is called the Victorian era Hannibal Lecter, if that tells you anything. <laughs> yeah, this is set in like the 1870s. Okay, okay. that changes the vibe. Set is a weird word, because this is true, this is it real. happened. Yeah. Okay. And I have to say, Kate Winkler Dawson is just the queen of true crime to me. Hmm. Her voice, <laughs> I could listen to her read a grocery list. So if you're into true crime, definitely give this book a listen. Okay. okay, so that wraps up the books that we read this past month. What are you reading in November? Great question. Oh, I'm reading um, A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. Oh, it has looks great incredible. reviews. Yeah, um, so that's next on the list. I'm also reading Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Mm -hmm. I've tried another one of her books, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue or something, and I wasn't really into it, so I'm hoping... I'm just gonna sort of dabble, because I know she's got a lot out there, so I'd like to yeah, try something different. I'm gonna try a B.E. Schwab book Which one? as well. It's a Kindle Unlimited book, A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I've heard it's a good one of hers to start with. That's probably a better idea. I think Gallant is actually one of her lower rated ones, but it was available from Libby, so here we go. I know one we're both gonna read this month. Oh. Iron Flame! baby coming out in like a week 
Oh, so yeah, we're ready for that. We're both big fourth wing fans, so I'm excited to see what happens next. I really hope it keeps the same pace and keeps the same, like, I, I'm gonna be so devastated if it doesn't live up to the first one. Yep. But let's see. Yep. We'll find out. I really want to read The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrienne Young. It's new. I haven't read her first one. I, or I forget what it's called. It was a Reese's book club pick, I think, the first one and a lot of people liked it, but I've heard that this next one is really, really good, so it's on the list. I might finally get into The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I feel like that's on your TBR every it, month. I know, it is. And you know what the best thing about November is? It's Christmas time, baby. It is Christmas. Christmas starts now. So I oh, will dear. be reading some Christmas books by the end of November for sure. You can count on lots of Christmas book reviews from me. And Hanukkah. Yes. And we love a diverse winter <laughs> holiday. You should read um, um, a Holly Jolly Diwali. Well, I saw it in the store and I thought about getting it's it. Good. Is it's good. It's good. Okay. My taste in Christmas books is like wildly different than my taste in other books. It's like she's a whole different person. Like <laughs> yeah. she is not the kind who will pick up the cheesy romance <laughs> novels and then suddenly it's that's all she right. wants to read during Christmas time. I love it. So we're going to move on to our favorite beauty picks of the month. Um, my first one, I just got about a week or two ago, but I'm loving it. It's the Peach and Lily Wild Dew Treatment Essence. Um, this was half price at Target. I have no idea why, because as far as I can tell, everybody's obsessed with it. So I picked it up for less than $20. I think it retails for almost $40. I have been loving this. My skin has not been great this month. And once I started putting this on, it's like drastically improved it. It's hydrated wow. it. It sort of cleared it up and sort of calmed it down. This has been really, really helpful to me. So I would definitely recommend. I've heard such good things about it. How do you say nia... Niacinamide? Niacinamide. It has niacinamide? It has niacinamide. Oh, niacinamide. Good for your pores! Yes. The only thing that I don't like about it is the way that you apply it. You have to kind of like shake it out like it's like balsamic vinegar or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh no! And it kind of, you see, it's supposed to either put it on your hand or put it on a cotton pad. And either way, I mean, I can get enough on, but I'm definitely wasting half of the product by doing uh, that. Yeah, I get that. It's fine since I got it for half off. All right, all of mine are makeup. <laughs> Shocking. And I'm gonna start us off with a bang because, oh, guys, the Pat McGrath Mothership Mega Celestial Nirvana Palette. That is too long of a name. It is a tongue twister. There's so many things I want to say about this. First of all, I got it at TJ Maxx for $35. We are thrifters over here. <laughs> when I saw this on the shelf at TJ Maxx, I about lost my mind because this is a limited edition holiday palette from last year. Now you can still get this. Okay, first of all, check your TJ Maxx, okay? Resellers are selling this on Poshmark, eBay, places like that. And my fellow Pat McGrath fans will know that we have been complaining for years that Pat McGrath only makes palettes that are pink <laughs> and brown. And it's just the same thing over and over. Well, guess what, you guys? Look at this bad boy. All the colors of the rainbow. Wow. Wow. I mean, this is the colorful Pat McGrath palette of our dream. You can do so many looks with this. It's super versatile. You can get a wearable, easy, everyday look, and you can also do something super creative and colorful. I have been reaching for this nonstop. When I wear other palettes, I feel sad that I'm not wearing this one. And the Pat McGrath formula. Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona, you cannot beat their eyeshadow formula. So that is definitely a major favorite of mine this month. All right. Yeah, you used it in half of your videos, so. Yeah. Okay, next for me, I've obviously done all skincare, um, just, you know, to foil her. That's our vibe. I'm gonna probably end up doing this every month because I really want you guys to buy it. It's the Emma Hardy Moringa Cleansing Balm. I use this morning and night um, as a second cleanse, and it is just super, it's beautiful. It's so luxurious, it smells amazing, it leaves your skin feeling dewy. I love it so much. I've been thinking about it because I am almost used up of my CeraVe <laughs> hydrating cleanser, which does the job, don't get me wrong. Although, I, even though it's the hydrating cleanser, I still feel like it's a teeny bit stripping. Mm -hmm. And definitely the experience is not what one would call luxurious. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
My next product is a super budget pick. It's so good. I just discovered this this month. It is the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer in the shade Light. There you go. There's your product shot. This is stupidly good. I am like shocked at how good this is. It's like eight bucks, okay? And to me, this is every bit as good as the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. Are you serious? And a way easier name to say. The thing is, the, the, okay, there is a difference. The texture is the same though. Both are creamy, balmy, mm. I'm shocked though. I know, I know. And everyone loves that Makeup by I Mario one. I love it, and yeah. There is a di big difference though. This is really pigmented. You need okay. to use a light hand. Yeah. The Makeup by Mario one, you really can't Pretty. overdo. Yeah. So there's something to be said for that. Okay, that, I'll, yeah, I'm fine then. I'll that help my Makeup by Mario. <laughs> <laughs> In terms yeah. of how it looks on the skin, y'all, mm. if you just use a light hand with this, you're going to get a very, if not identical, result to the Makeup by Mario one. And I have both, so, cool. you know, I'm telling you, it's good. Okay, next on my list is this Wee Dad Soft Defining Mousse Vita Curl. It's a curl mousse. Um, I had never used this before. I don't normally use mousse on my curls. I have been absolutely loving this. It smells amazing. It smells like a fresh bouquet of roses. What? It's incredible. Um, and it does a really good job. I use this as a standalone product on my curls um, when they're wet and I won't put anything else on it. It does a pretty good job of defining and keeping frizz away. For just using one product. I've been really Your recommendations this. are like speaking right to me today because I have a mousse I've been using. It's the Not Your Mother's. Yeah. And it the performance is good, but it smells horrible. Oh yeah. Like smell that. Oh my god. I know. It smells lovely. Yeah, this is this is really good. Um, alright. The next thing I want to talk about, I talk about all the time. I'm a broken record about this product, but it's so good. It's honestly probably my favorite period makeup product. It's the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in the shade Amber. I use this to contour every day. There are other products that I like for contour, but nothing competes with this. It blends out perfectly. It is the perfect cool toned grayish brown to give you a little bit of shadow under your cheekbones and define your face. Amazing. I, I'm gonna have to buy this. I thing. cannot do without it. And it's also so fun because I literally draw it directly on my face mm -hmm. and like something about that satisfying. It's just so yeah. fun. Okay, my last one is the Ordinary's Multi-Peptide Lash and Brow Serum. I'm sure y'all have seen this before. To make a long story short, I had been using the Grande Lash Serum for several months and it absolutely worked wonders on my lashes and it also absolutely destroyed my eyes. They were bloodshot, they hurt. I may or may not have been having vision problems. I would look up some reviews and some information yeah, on that side effect. <laughs> you had the darkening <laughs> lash line too. Yeah. It did what it said it was gonna do. It did exactly what it said it was gonna do. The side effects are just not worth it for me. So I switched over to using this little lash serum, which doesn't have the main product that's in Grande Lash. I'm not a scientist. I'm not sure what that one is. I just know that this doesn't have it. This just has a bunch of peptides that's supposed to help with lash growth. I use it morning and night, and it has really maintained my lashes very well. Yeah, your really lashes look it. amazing. Yeah, and it's and not irritating. I've had no side effects. Um, it just feels better even putting it on. I mean, the other, the Grande Lash kind of stung a little bit, <laughs> which should have been my first sign. <laughs> And it's, this is very affordable. This is about $14, so it's like the really easy is to so try. The ordinary is so well Yeah, so this has been great. So far, so good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that reminds me to say that one of my favorites is Aaron's new Natasha Denona I Need a New Palette. <laughs> she got the I, I Need that. a New Palette. It's gorgeous. Okay. But another favorite that's actually mine is the Clinique Lip Gloss in Black Honey Pop. I love this, too. So... I'm sure you guys know the Clinique Black Honey Almost Lipstick went super viral last year. I have owned that product, used it up, and did not repurchase because I feel like it grabs at your lips a little bit. If you have dry lips, and I have chronically dry lips, it will just kind of sit a little, it, it like gathers in the texture, which I don't love. But the lip gloss gives you the same effect, but glossier, and just 
smooths over any dryness on your lips. This will make your lips look healthy even if they are chapped. Mm. So I'm telling you, it is the lip gloss all the way. I know I'm not alone in this. People are starting to figure out that the lip gloss is where it's at. So thank you, Clinique, for this. Okay. You have one more? Nope. Oh, cool. Do you? Nope. All right, that wraps up this video. We are a new channel, so we would really appreciate it if you would like this video or subscribe if you want to see more from us. Our next video will be up in a few days, so until then, see you next time.